we're at the top of the hour. Let me go ahead and get started. Uh, we have a wonderful show for you today. So welcome to the Rural Library Network Conversations for Action. I'm Regina Washington, Director of Rural Impact Networks at Partners for Education. And, to, and today for the October Conversations for Action webinar, I'm joined by Asia Hadley, the Director of Partnerships with Candid. Asia elevates Candid's impact through cultivating relationships with key stakeholders, fundraising regionally, and providing perspectives on philanthropy. For 15 years, she has dedicated her career to advancing an informed and equitable social sector. As we know, many libraries lack resources and support for their innovative projects, programs, and community solutions. This conversation will focus on free visualizing funding for libraries mapping platform. Uh, you will have access to a wealth of data about who was funded, who has funded libraries and learn how to access and use the data tool and other candid resources. Um, Next slide, please. All right, uh, right there, thank you. So let me tell you a little, little bit more about Asia. From 2002 to 2005, Asia worked in programs, volunteered, um, volunteer recruitment and development at Big Brothers, Big Sisters of Central Indiana. Her fundraising efforts helped to raise over $600,000 for the agency. She spent the next two years in the private sector delivering diversity leadership training for high school and college students and recruiting people of color for positions in the, in the sec, uh, social sector. After honing her training skills in the private sector, Asia applied those skills as training coordinator for the Foundation Center from 2007 to 2013. She returned to the Foundation Center in 2016 after leaving temporarily to focus on her growing family. She held roles as virtual assistant and Atlanta lead where she managed daily operations, focusing on community engagement, strategic alignment, training and programming. Most recently, she managed cross-functional collaboration for Global Matching Funds Project for Habitat for Humanity International. Asia earned her undergraduate degree in political science from Florida A&M University and master's degree in philanthropic stu stu studies and public affairs with a concentration in nonprofit management from Indiana University Purdue University at Indianapolis, Asia co-leads a Girl Scout troop and is an advisory board member with Pure Esperanza. She is a proud wife and mom of two young negotiators whose request for a puppy is currently pending. Welcome, Asia, to our Conversations for Action webinar. It's a delight to have you on our show today to bring important information and resources to our library network membership. As you know, most libraries serve as cultural hubs in the community as a safe and trusted space to learn, create, share, and access cultural materials and resources. A goal of these conversations is to provide listeners with information, resources, inspiration, to move toward action in their own rural library. So Asia, welcome. Why don't you uh, tell us a little bit more about your role and also about the visualizing funding for libraries. Thank you so much, Regina. I appreciate being back and thank you, Elsa and Samantha as well. And um, I just appreciate being here, um, being able to share this information. I do have an update for you all about um, that negotiating About the puppy, yes. <laughs> and the answer was no. <laughs> mm. 
Oh, oh no. everybody's shocked. But they no. will have to refine their <laughs> negotiation skills. Yes, yes. And, and and learn some skills themselves around this house. So yeah, so um, that is that is that update, and I need to update my uh <laughs> my bio in that regard. Um, nevertheless, I appreciate being here and um, look forward to sharing a, more about the resources that we have at Candid and um, visualizing funding for libraries tool. With that being said, let's move on and talk about what is Candid because I'm not sure if everyone knows exactly what Candid is and what it's all about. On February 4, 1st, 2019, Foundation Center and GuideStar joined forces to become Candid, a 501c3 nonprofit organization. Together, these organizations brought a combined 88 years of expertise and millions of data points to Candid. So why Candid? Well, every year, millions of nonprofits spend trillions of dollars around the world. Candid finds out where the money comes from, where it goes, and why it matters. And how do we do this? Well, we do this in a variety of ways. Um, we do it through research and collaboration and training um, through programs like this. So in essence, Candid connects people who want to change the world to the resources they need to do it. So at the completion um, of this session, you should be able to do a few things. One is to understand Candid's resources and where to find them. So I'm going to give a, a brief tour of um, not only the visualizing um, libraries tool, but just a very brief uh, overview of our of our website and what you can find. I'll also um, demonstrate that tool because um, sometimes it's just not enough to talk about it, right? You actually want to see it in action, so we'll do that. And then we're going to connect you with um, the nearest funding information network partner, um, or we call them FINS, um, that's in your area, because I understand that, you know, some of you are from Kentucky, but some of you from are from across, you know, the, uh, the country as well. I heard South Carolina in there as well. So first, we're going to look at some um, how we're responding to um, global events. So much is happening. So we want um, you all to have access to some of that information um, where you can find some of our training. Then I'll go into the tools um, and our funding information network, and then we'll do a brief Q&A. And um, I know that someone is also monitoring the chat. So if you have questions, feel free to put them into the chat and um, we'll um, get to those questions. Um, as we all know, so much is happening across the world. So we want to thank you for being a part of Candid's learning community. And we recognize that this may be a challenging time for many of us. Um, Candid has shifted its key learning opportunities to a virtual format. Um, so everything that is on our website, all of the training right now is virtual. Um, we normally do have in-person trainings, but right now um, everything is online so you can find them at Candid Learning Online. And as an FYI, you will receive uh, a copy of this presentation. So this information will um, be sent to you. We've also invested in providing the social sector with resources they need to make informed decisions about today's most pressing issues. So, you know, we have resources about COVID-19, data about funding um, for organizations that are looking to um, receive support. Uh, COVID-19 resources are available, as well as um, a portal on our racial equity um, resources. Um, we, we have uh, a plethora of funding opportunities to address this and um, grateful to have a portal specifically um, directed toward racial equity. 
So if you go to um, learning.candid.org, this is where you can find all of our training opportunities. Not only do we have them live uh, via virtual programming, but we also have um, many resources that are taped um, or via YouTube that is on demand. So that's something that we have that's very exciting. In addition, we have candidates ask a service. So anyone can browse our knowledge base where we have you know, hundreds of questions that we answer for you um, via uh, a knowledge base platform that we have. You also can email us questions and we'll respond within 48 hours. You can chat live with one of our online librarians from nine to five Eastern time, Monday through Friday at no cost. So if you're writing that proposal or you are looking for some stats, chances are we can help you answer those questions at no cost to you. We have other free resources as well. Of course, you can go to candidlearning.org where you can see our training resources and webinars, knowledge base. But when you're writing proposals or you're um, generating reports, we don't want you to start from scratch. We have sample documents for you to use so that you will have templates. So that is something that you have access to. We also have philanthropynewsdigest.org is a part of our platform where you can get news, um, requests for proposal alerts. That's what the RFP stands for. Um, jobs in the social sector, classifieds. We have all of that via philanthropynewsdigest.org. We also have issuelab.org. Now this has over 30,000 reports, any area, uh, that you are researching or exploring, whether it be libraries or criminal justice reform. Um, many people come to you looking for different types of research opportunities, and you can um, always reference Issue Lab to access those reports. And uh, we're also um, was formerly a library, so we still have uh, collections, but we have them via ebooks now. So this is exciting because any social sector uh, book you can find via catalog.foundationcenter.org where you can check out ebooks for free. So that is something that was really exciting uh, for uh, all of our former patrons that used to come into our physical library space. Now that we're virtual, we can still offer these um, opportunities to check out these social sector resources. So it is 116 already. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and transition to our visualizing funding for libraries um, tool. And just let me share a little bit about this tool before I jump in. We launched this tool in 2017 to give library professionals the free access they need about grant funding data so that they can be successful in their fundraising. Um, the tool was developed through a Knight Foundation News Challenge Grant and continues to be made available from generous support from the Talker Foundation. Many libraries don't necessarily have a friends or foundation group established to support their needs. So fundraising may not be a skill that all librarians are trained for, but now more than ever, librarians find themselves in a community leadership or entrepreneurial role wanting to secure funding for a new project or to continue to innovate and deliver services. And that's why we're so glad to be able to share this tool with you. And as I pull up this, um, this tool, I want you to know that you can access it at libraries.foundationcenter.org. And when you go to libraries.foundationcenter.org, you will see this, um, this site. And just give me a thumbs up, Regina, if everyone 
can see my screen. Okay, perfect. Wonderful. So I want to talk just a little bit about the data. It comes primarily from IRS returns. Private foundations in the U.S. are required to report their grants to the federal government on their 990s. Candid takes that data, organizes it, codes it, and stores it in our database. In addition, we also have what we call e-reporters. And these are funders who voluntarily choose to provide Candid with their grant making data. Uh, the benefits of this is that we get much more robust grant descriptions, which you'll see in, in a moment, and we get more timely data. It can take more than two years for the IRS to provide Candid with data. With e-reporters, we often get the data within the next year. Candid also looks at foundation websites and increasingly is finding grants data from press releases and from the news. This data tool is limited to funding for libraries in the US since um, 2006. So what you're looking at is data that dates back to um, 2006, and it's specifically for libraries. And um, if I have a, a, a little time, I'll show you a different database that we have called the Foundation Directory Online that broadens your ability to find funders for various needs. But this one is specifically for libraries. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and click on Explore Data Tool. And as the uh, website is coming up, it's actually um, a map. And at the top, it says Visualizing Funding for Libraries. And what you're looking at is a map of the United States. And you have four boxes across the map. You have the number of grants. This is the number of grants given to libraries. Then you have the value of grants. So $5.6 billion of grants have been given by over 17,000, well, 17,637 to be, you know, fairly exact, number of funders. So this number of funders is actually greater than the number of recipients. Now, generally, that is not the case. But in the case of libraries, it's unique, where we have more funders than recipient organizations. Now, um, I'm going to, I'm hovering over our view area at the right hand top, because what we're going to see is recipients. But I'm going to scroll down just a bit so I can hover over Kentucky. And if I cl click on the bubble, and you can click on any of the bubbles across the country, you'll see that in Kentucky, 599 grants have been given with a value of about two, uh, almost $30 million by 175 funders to 143 recipients. Now we can use this database, ooh, splice and dice and use it a variety of ways. But what I'm gonna do is I'm simply gonna click on this 175 funders. And what happens is the list of funders populate. And what you see are the funders, where they're located, and how many grants, um, the value of grants given, along with the number of grants given. Now, whenever you come up with a list view in this way, it is organized by number of grants, okay? And when I'm doing research, whether it's in the Foundation Directory Online database, because it looks the same, I like to look at the number of grants that a funder has given. So as I scroll down, you can see that that number decreases. But the key here is 
the different ways in which you can search and the different amount of information that you can find. So I'm simply gonna click on the Community Foundation of Louisville, for example, this funder. And I can find different information about this funder, some high level information about their financial data. We give you um, their EIN and of course their website, but we also give you some high level information about that organization. And then if I click on the grants tab, I can find the specific grants, the 32 grants to be uh, exact, uh, about who they gave to. So the Community Foundation for Louisville, for example, gave to the Berry Center, and you can see when they gave that those dollars and the amount. So this gives you some great information that you can actually look for um, funders that could potentially fund your library. I'm going to X out of this. There we go. And I'm going to go back up because I want to show you how to um, to conduct a search in another way. So the first time I just went to and hovered over a particular state. You can search as many states as you want. Um, I'm going to click on add a location. Um, I'm just going to choose South Carolina. And when I start clicking in South, um some options populate but i am going to click on south carolina united states and it populates in my selection area again it highlights the number of grants um, given uh, in south carolina for the value of 15 million and it gives you a number of funders and the number of recipients so you can search this database, whether it be by recipients, by funders, or by area served. It's a great database to play with because you can get as specific as you want. And what I mean by that is if you hover over more, and I'm just going to do that, you have more options in which you can search. So say, for example, um, our library wants to do a capital, some type of capital project. So I am going to click on capital and infrastructure. And maybe I'm doing some building and renovations. I'm just going to click there. All right. And you can. Let's see. There we go. Selection added. You have to click on the uh, click on the check. Make sure the check mark is is clicked on the box. All right. So then, what you clicked comes up: building and renovations. So I see that eleven grants have been given in this area um, by seven different funders to nine different organizations. So after I know this information. I can do a list, uh, I can do a list search. And once I click on list to the left and scroll down, I can see where those funders are located. So I'm just gonna um, click on post and courier foundation since they are in South Carolina. I see that they have given out, out two grants and then it gives me detail about that particular foundation. And I'm gonna click on the grant and look at um, who they gave uh, the grant to. So this is just an overview of how you can use the visualizing funding for library tool to search for grants for your particular library. I am gonna click on charts which is to the left, because when I click on charts, 
It also shares additional information about grants to organizations ba based in South Carolina in support of academic libraries or archives and special collections. But it also shares, uh, based on my criteria, building and renovations. And I see that it's loading um, on my screen. I believe it may look like that as well. So it should give a moment. So Asia, while you're waiting for that to load, um, is this part, when you're accessing this part, is this free or does this cost to get to this part? Great question. This tool- Colleen asked that question. Oh, awesome. This tool is absolutely free mm -hmm. and, you, and it is made uh, available through the generous contributions of the Knight Foundation and the Talker Foundation. So we are um, fortunate to be able to have this op opportunity uh, to have this available. And I'm going to, I don't know, I have a lot of things going behind the scenes here and it's taken a little while to load, but I believe that you get the picture with that. And I'm just gonna try to uh, reload my screen here with the maps. But having um, the capability to access this um, tool for free is something that we're really proud at Candid to have to make available to librarians all across the country. Um, we've gotten a lot of feedback about you know, how librarians use the tool, but we are always looking for um, case use studies. So if anyone out there, okay, if you use this tool and you find a great funder and you, you apply and you actually receive funding, let us know. Um, we, we love to share success stories. Um, however, I did click on charts and we give you some high level information, some visuals so that you can see the total value uh, of grants given, as well as the total number of grants just visually, so that you can see uh, see any trends that may be occurring. So with that being said, um, Regina, do we have any more questions as it relates to the Visualizing Libraries tool and where you can find it? Yes, thank you, Asia. Um, one um, building question off of the initial question, the question is, how do we access it for free once they go on to the, uh, the site there, maps.foundationcenter.org, it gives a face page that actually um, uh, sort of insinuates that there needs to be some kind of payment. But I believe if you click on tour, um, but it doesn't give a live navigation. You, do you have to do it through more of a recorded video to tour? Or is there a way to access it real time like you have it right there? You can access it real time. And um, it is, and let me, I'm gonna stop share just for a moment. Thank you. And I want to drop that link in the chat. So what I'm going to do, if you just give me one second, is um, go ahead and drop that link in the chat because you should have free access to this tool. So what I'm going to do is um, highlight this link and drop it in the chat for you. Okay. So I'm dropping that in the chat for and you. And Kelly, um, who's joined us as well, she's, she said that um, she was able to access the website Okay. And is working for her. So I think your uh, web link that you're going to be sharing would there it is. probably be very helpful. Great. Okay, there great. It is. Mm -hmm. And I believe it went to host and panelists, but if you can make sure everyone has access, that works out well. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do at this time, I'm going to just transition um, to candid.org because. I do want to show you um, some specific information as it relates to our, um, our website and our um, funding information network. 
So um, candid.org, and I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. And as I pull that up, again, Candid gets you the information you need to do good. All right, so you're seeing my website, uh, Candid. I'm seeing my screen, all right? So if you click, can, I'm at candid.org. And if you click on things you can do, a drop down menu comes up. This is where you can find our training opportunities under Improve Your Nonprofit. Um, I know that many of you also work on boards for uh, or volunteer for nonprofit boards. Make sure that the boards that you're participating in or nonprofits that you work with fill out their GuideStar nonprofit profile. I'm gonna give that a plug because we know that 53% of organizations that um, claim their nonprofit profile using GuideStar, which you can do for free, receive more funding next year, the following year. So you definitely wanna do that. So I'm gonna click on Candid in Your Community. And this is where you can access our partner uh, training and opportunities. They're called Funding Information Network. And what we do is we, um, you, this is where you can get free access to our foundation directory online. So um, I'm just going to uh, type in Kentucky and just click search. And I'm gonna scroll down and you can see all the locations where you can get free access to um, our many of our resources as well as the foundation directory online. So the Lexington Public Library, Kenton Public Library, they're all over Kentucky. You have quite a few, which is quite exciting. And if anyone else there is interested in becoming a funding information network partner. This is a great way to um, uh, to shore up or make your programming and and collaborate collaborations more robust because we have a plethora of opportunities in which you can help uh, the community um, that you're in. And if you want to learn more about becoming a funding information network par partner, you can. Um, just click here and there's a lot of information there. But I just wanted to show you that because our foundation directory online database is, is just like the visualizing um, funding for libraries tool, except it's not just for libraries. You can, you can um, find funders that will fund child development or domestic violence, just whatever the case may be. So I just want to emphasize that. All right. Um, also things that you can do that I mentioned um, earlier in our presentation, in the presentation is this is where you can um, connect with Philanthropy News Digest. Um, we do have a candid blog. We love to have, um, especially during Libraries Month, um, we love to have uh, collaborative blog opportunities. If you wanna write something, that's always great. We're open to that. So you definitely want to um, uh, connect with us if you are interested in you know, writing a blog for um, Candid. So I just wanted to make sure that you could uh, you found the, re the free resources that you have available at Candid. At this time, I'm going to transition back to um, my PowerPoint because I have a few more things that I want to highlight before we um, you know, wrap up and take uh, additions. So thank you so much. Um, and I hope that we have so much information on our website. We literally have a class that you can take to explore all of our resources. So if you give me one moment, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, transition back so, uh, to the PowerPoint presentation. 
I, my my computer is getting a workout today <laughs> with all this back and forth. And so far, it's been um, doing pretty well. Okay. Let's see where I am. Okay. All righty. I think I can share my screen now. Share screen. Okay. And my slide and share. Okay. There we go. All right. <clears throat> so I already talked about um, where you can access the foundation directory online. Um, that is a resource that you do need to be connected with um, one of your local library, local libraries that has access. That's why I showed you where you can access one of those libraries. And because of COVID, um, although most of our libraries are now open, which is great, I know that some of them still provide a virtual link so that you can um, do some more research. We have over 400 funding um, information network partners across the country. Um, again, it is by subscription. However, we do provide free access through our funding information network partner organizations. Um, a little bit more about FDO. Um, it's searchable. It's web-based, just as you saw. We have over um, 27,000 database, um, over 900,000 recipients with $4 million plus grants added yearly. So um, this is exciting because this is where you can find uh, funders that would be a good fit with other programs that you may have within your library or just be a resource to other um, organizations that may come to your, your library. Um, again, I showed you where you can find learning.candid.org, find us, where you can find your local library, I typed in Kentucky, so that you could see exactly where all of those locate, uh, locations are in your particular area. So you can connect with us, sign up um, for our regional newsletter. You can join out of our New York um, office. Find us on Facebook and Twitter at um, candid um, underscore learning. Um, so this is something that we want to make sure that you all have access to as you're um, exploring and growing and connecting with the community. And we want to stay connected. And I know that Regina um, and her team, you know, they do a great job in making sure that you get the resources and get connected to the folks that you need to do good. And with that being said, it's about 141, Regina. I would love to, you know, take some time to answer any questions that folks may have. Thank you, Asia. This is definitely very, very helpful and practical. As one of the um, attendees said here, um, Miss Literacy, she said, this is awesome. So hopefully this information will not only sit with the uh, attendees, but be able to sh be shared throughout our rural and, uh, in, you know, libraries. Um, so at this point in time, please, those that are uh, connected with us on this webinar today, please uh, drop your questions. Um, even if it's, a, you know, a grant writing question, um, you know, because again, Asia can, you know, she has a wealth of knowledge and experience with um, grant writing, but also we can also use those questions for future references for future webinars um, that we'll provide as well. So any question is definitely a good question. Um, you know, just Asia, you know, you mentioned several things about um, trainings and my mind goes to the point where, you know, what has been your experience in terms of as you're training librarians or library professionals, uh, what has been the top barriers for libraries to securing funding? Mm. Well, you know, from working closely with librarians, everyone has a different tool set or skill set. And um, you have some librarians that are very comfortable using, uh, you know, various databases, 
particularly um, the Foundation Directory Online database, as well as visualizing funding for libraries. So sometimes they just may not know how to use the tool to find and to make that right connection. So that's number one. So just getting familiar and getting comfortable with doing that research, understanding that it takes time because you don't get what you don't ask for. So you you know we understand that librarians are busy. I mean, this is only a slice of you know the work that you know librarians do. So it's if it's not directly tied to their job and it's something that they want to do, it just may not get done because you have so many other things on their plate. So what we find is that um, while uh, you know many librarians, they want to take more initiative and grow in that, uh, grow their programs in a particular way, if it's not directly tied to their job or kind of mandatory, it just may fall by the wayside. So that's just one piece. Um, for those where, uh, uh, whose responsibility is to raise money for um, the library or find additional resources, um, uh, some of the barriers are just our connections. And because uh, we found, you know, through research that it is better if you could, you know, have a, a communication with the funder before you apply. So making sure that you do your research you know who the funders are who fund in your area, making an effort to reach out to them, share your program idea to get their feedback. So, and that in itself takes time to, to takes time to do. And even if you don't have time, you may not have the, the connection to do that. But what we say is you have to just reach out. You have to, mm -hmm. and that's why we give you contact information. We give you website, we give you telephone numbers and email addresses if they are available. We give all of that to you so that you can reach out to make those connections. It's not always possible um, to connect with a funder, but you'll, you'll be surprised at how they want to talk to you, especially now where it's a lot easier. You don't have to drive to their office. You can, um, you know, connect via zoom and they'll take, you know, 30 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes to talk to you about your programs and your services. So, um, I believe that, you know, going through those steps is part of the process. And sometimes we want to skip those st steps or we don't think that they're necessary Sometimes they're not, but it's much better when a funder can connect with you face to face or at least via Zoom so that they can hear from you um, more about your programs and services because you know your programs and services better than anyone. And you can share your passion, you can share your impact, and you can share your results sometimes even better than you can on paper or at least combine it so that when that, that proposal comes through, they, they put a face with that proposal, they put passion with their proposal, and they are ready to hopefully fund your proposal. Thank you for that response, definitely. And I do believe that Candid probably has some free, excuse me, training opportunities. And also the Rural Library Network will continue to provide these webinars and training opportunities as well, geared around um, funding opportunities. Um, and one particular one, uh, if you have not registered for, for our Rural Library Summit that's coming up on December the 1st, we will have one session that's just focused in on strategies to attract public and private funders. And we will have those who are experienced with those private and, 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 and uh, public funding processes and librarians who've been able to secure and can give you some tips. We do have a question here, um, Asia. Um, Miss Sheila from South Carolina, um, an, a strong youth librarian there in the area there, you, uh, in, uh, wants to know, uh, if there are grants specifically for an artist to do programs and displays. Now, before I hand it off to you for a response, uh, Ms. Sheila, we also did an arts and humanities webinar back in August. 
And if you go to our website and Elsa can drop the website um, link again, uh, but if you go to that website, you'll be able to listen to a uh, webinar that was posted in August. And at the end, it will give you some also some funding opportunities there as well. Go ahead, Asia. Great. Yes. And you would use the foundation directory online to find those resources as well. Um, you can use Visualize Funding for Libraries as well, because sometimes within those um, categories, you can find um, some programming within the library that you can do. So either resource would be fine. And the, the answer is absolutely. Um, funders are you know, funding the arts um, you know, a great deal because they understand even during times uh, of crisis and, and pandemics, they know that, uh, you know, the arts is a lifeblood to communities and, you know, funding is still available and uh, funding is, um, is very competitive, but it's still available in community so definitely for arts programming um if you don't mind regina do i have about two minutes that i can do just a quick uh a quick demonstration okay yes that'd be so fun. While, yes and while um i'm pulling this up i think it is important to note that anything that you want to fund there's a funder out there for it you just have to know where to look so what I'm going to do at this time is I'm actually going to go to the foundation directory online and um, do a quick demonstration uh, on arts program funding because it's important that you see where these funders are and how you can actually um, access them. So. I'm about to share my screen. So what you're looking at is the Foundation Directory Online Professional, okay? Now this is a tool that you can use, but you do need a subscription. And once again, that's why I show you, even in South Carolina, if you type in South Carolina and you type in you know, uh, where you can find your funding information network partner, you can get access to, to this database for free for free, okay? So um, I'm at Foundation Directory Online, and you know what? I am going to type in arts programs um, in South Carolina and just click search and see what happens. And I can just start from there. So automatically, um, sports and recreation comes up, arts education, program support. So you have to look at what comes up. I'm just going to take out or just push the X for sports and recreation because that's not quite what I was looking for. So the subject area, arts education in South Carolina. All right. And um, it comes up with program support. And then I'm just going to scroll down and see what my results are. And this is just a high level brief <laughs> search. Okay, so I can, there are 92 grant makers. If I just click on view grant makers only, I can scroll down and take a look at the, the grant makers that come up. So this lets me know that, hey, depending on where you're located, um, I'll just click the Coastal Community Foundation of South Carolina. I'm just gonna click on, on that link. It takes me directly to this funder's website. And it tells me right here what's being funded. And I see that they do fund arts and culture, may not give as much as they do in education or human services, but they give plenty of dollars. But more importantly, I wanna see where they're giving. So it looks like they're giving to a lot of museums and you see the amount in the year. And then they're funding interests. So using the foundation directory online, you can ask those questions and find those funders that give in a particular area of interest. So I hope that helps, Regina. 
Absolutely. This tool that you just demonstrated um, definitely um, focuses in on subjects, specific subjects of interest. Mm -hmm. And you were very clear that this particular part of the foundation directly, uh, directory online professional, it does require a subscription and you're able to access it at, even without a subscription. Yes. If you can identify a foundation information network member mm -hmm. that is already subscribing to this particular online professional website mm -hmm. and to use their portal from that location. Absolutely. You can All right, that. wonderful. And I believe that, let's see if we have any, any more um, questions coming through the portal. Um, definitely, uh, Ms. Sheila says, thank you. This was very helpful. Um, again, you know, there are many resources on this particular website that Asia has shared, and there are trainings that will help navigate you through that website resource um, and other trainings, even to refine your grant writing skills, I believe as well, and also to incorporate equity um, principles within your grant writing, I'm sure as well. Um, so I, I don't see any particular um, questions in the chat at this time. I definitely want to reiterate that um, Rural Library Network has a newsletter that we will be launching pretty soon. I believe Elsa has dropped the, um, you know, the actual web link for future access to our newsletter. Uh, we're also excited about opening our registration for Rural Library Summit um, in terms of on December the 1st, it's gonna be held. And we have so many wonderful speakers uh, plan for you. Um, and then also, if you are not yet, can you go back? Right, um, right there. That's wonderful. If you're not yet a member of our Rural Library Network, please take a moment to actually uh, update your status um, to member. It's a free membership. And you see now on, on this particular screen, the address where you can actually um, quickly fill out an application. It's just a quick survey. You fill it out and it actually uh, allows you to uh, initiate the membership process. Um, in terms of the next webinar scheduled for November the 3rd, 2021 still um, at one o'clock Eastern, uh, Eastern time, we are looking forward to engaging the network members um, to have an interactive conversation, uh, to capture your ideas for the network membership benefits, uh, learn more about what we have planned for uh, resources and opportunities, and just to be able to connect with other network members. This is the first time that we are going to just open up the actual webinar for discussion. So you don't wanna miss this opportunity as we're getting ready for the year of 2022. Uh, we wanna get your input um, and we wanna get your ideas of what would continue to make this network valuable. And we'll have um, Leslie Graham, uh, who's our partner from Save the Children. She'll help to facilitate this particular webinar. And actually that would probably be, I'm so sorry, we had a, um, an alert uh, test at that point in time. It's not a real situation, but it's a, just a test. So, um, but to continue what I'm saying is please join us for our next Conversations for Action on November the 3rd. Um, we thank you so much, Asia, for a wonderful presentation and also connecting our network members with this very vital 
resource. As they move forward to make a change in their network and bring more resources in their communities. Um, thank you all who have actually joined us today on our webinar. We look forward to seeing you next month. All right, you take care now and continue to do great work. Thank you so much. Thank you.